Now on a lot of our older cover crop videos, we still get a lot of comments from people who are new to cover cropping in their gardens asking, what's the purpose? What's the benefits? Why should I be doing this? Well, what's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day. It is October 12th here in South Georgia. Supposed to finally get some rain later this afternoon, which means it's a great day to go ahead and get some cool season cover crops in the ground. So today we're gonna to be working in this plot right here behind me, which I think I may transition to a no-till plot. We'll just have to see how everything goes. We're gonna be planting a cool season cover crop mix in here. I'm gonna tell you all about everything that's in that mix and why all those things in the mix are useful for our soils. And then at the end of the video, if we're not getting wet, I wanna show you something really cool we made with something we harvested from our garden earlier this year. So we've got a 30 by 35 plot here in the dream garden. As far as the history of this plot goes, back in the spring we had lots of tomatoes and peppers and even some eggplant planted here. Left the peppers, pulled out the tomatoes come midsummer because they were toast. Tried some fall pumpkins in here, the warty goblin variety, and they just never really did anything. Had a lot of disease issues. We yanked those and the peppers out of here, and then we came in here and added a thin layer, what we had left of those composted wood chips that we filled our raised beds with. We came in here and kind of top dressed this with a thin layer of that stuff. And I was glad we had some of those composted wood chips left over after filling the raised beds because I really like the looks of that stuff and I wanted to try it in one of my in-ground garden plots to see if I liked it. Maybe that would be a good viable option as far as converting a plot to no-till in the future. And from what I've seen so far, I think this stuff would work really well in our in-ground garden. Although it's just kind of a thin layer on top there, it has really kind of insulated the plot and helped with moisture conservation. It's really, really dry around here. I did run the overhead sprinkler on it a couple times and I noticed that the really sandy soil beneath those composted wood chips was staying moist. So this stuff may actually be better off for us as far as our no-till plots go than the gin trash compost. We'll see over time, but I really like the moisture retention that these composted wood chips are providing. And since I'm liking this so much so far, I think I'm gonna add a good bit to this plot here. Got a little lane there where the guy can back in with his trailer and should be able to dump it right on this plot here. That would make it easy to spread around. So this is where our onions are going and the chickens are doing such a good job terminating this cover crop. I have helped them out with the mower a little bit but I don't think we're gonna have to till this. I think I can come in here with a wheel hoe and flip over those few sprigs of pearl millet that are still green out there and terminate those. And then I think we can come in here with a layer of that stuff right there before we plant our onions. So we're a little over a year into using our chicken tractor for grazing these cover crops on our in-ground garden plots. And so far, it has worked really well to reduce the amount of tillage we have to do to terminate these cover crops. It's a lot slower than using a tiller, obviously. If you were gonna come in here and turn over a plot real quick, you'd still have to use a tiller. These chickens take a month or two to really work over one of these 30 by 35 plots. But if I plan ahead, and I'm patient with it. I can let the chickens do all the work. I can preserve some soil biology there, not disrupt that with the tiller. And I think we end up with a much healthier plot in the long run. That's not to say I won't ever use a tiller. I have one, I will use it if necessary. But ideally, I'd like to let the chickens do their thing and then come in and cover it with some compost, maybe we'll hold a little bit before that, and then we're ready to go. We leave all those root networks from the cover crop in the soil relatively undisturbed. So I'm not gonna say it's definite at this point, but it's very possible that we convert this plot and this plot to no-till over the next year. That would make all our plots here in the dream garden 
no-till plots and then obviously we've got our raised bed plot over there now this larger plot right here where the ducks are out there scavenging a little bit of corn i'm not quite ready to take on converting this yet and probably be a few years down the road if i ever decide to do that we are going to plant a cool season cover crop here i had some volunteer corn popping up mowed that down and with as dry as it's been it's kind of just dying out there so i need to get this cleaned up a little bit in the next few days so we can plant another cover crop here not going to do that today but probably will pretty soon so now let's talk about what we're planting today why we're planting it what's in this mix and when is the ideal time for us to plant cool season cover crops so here in south georgia we kind of have two main seasons where we do a lot of cover cropping we do our warm season cover cropping usually in the summer when it gets really really hot and we can't grow a lot of vegetables because it's so hot and humid to say between july and september that's when we do a lot of warm season cover crops and then this time of year october through say february we grow a lot of cool season cover crops throughout the winter and then we'll terminate them in the spring and have that plot ready to plant now according to green cover seeds website and that's where we get a lot of our cover crop seeds they say you want to plant your cool season cover crops four to six weeks before your average first frost date now, our average first frost date is usually towards the end of november so we're pretty much good on schedule we're about six weeks before that average first frost date now i can get away with planting cover crops sometimes in the dead middle of winter because it'll swing hot all of a sudden sometimes for us and we'll be wearing shorts on christmas day but if you have consistently cold temperatures throughout the winter months definitely stick by that rule four to six weeks before your average first frost date that's going to let these cool season cover crops get up and go and germinate establish before you get some really cold weather now most of this stuff is really cold hardy but it needs time to really establish before it starts getting really pounded by the cold weather now on a lot of our older cover crop videos we still get a lot of comments from people who are new to cover cropping in their gardens asking what's the purpose what's the benefits why should i be doing this so let's kind of briefly go through some of these cover crop benefits so one would be nitrogen fixation so some of the cover crops we plant warm season and cool season are able to fix their own nitrogen a lot of legumes do that and some of the ones in this mix we'll be planting today do that as far as the cool season nitrogen fixtures go you've got things like clover winter peas hairy vetch all of those are going to fix atmospheric nitrogen and add it to your soil so you get a lot of nitrogen addition there that's available the next season when you go to plant vegetables there the second big reason to cover crop would be because of the organic matter you get added to your soils now some people have soils that hold organic matter really well we have sandy soils here that don't hold organic matter really well it kind of burns up in that sandy soil and so we're always having to constantly add organic material to the soil cover crops is a great easy way to do that compost is good too but the cover crops make it easy and just like you saw over there where the chickens are we've got lots of nice organic material sitting on top of that soil there and benefit number three for planting cover crops is nutrient scavenging. So a lot of the cover crops we grow have these really long tap roots that grow way down into the soil, way deeper than your vegetable plant roots are ever going to go. And so what that does when they grow way down there like that, it scavenges nutrients from way down deep in the soil profile and helps bring them up to the soil surface so they are then available to the next round of plants, say vegetables, that you plant in that plot. The fourth benefit would be erosion control. Now I don't have a lot of issues with that here because my property is pretty flat, but if you live in a hilly area and maybe your in-ground garden is on terraces or hills, you can have a lot of issues with your soil washing away. Having that cover crop in place, having those roots kind of anchoring down to the soil, holding it in place is going to keep your garden soil where you want it to be instead of washing away. And the fifth benefit, which is a really, really big one, is weed suppression. So we get a lot of comments, people asking, how do you have so few weeds in your garden? And it's not because we're out here pulling weeds 24 seven. It has a lot to do with our cover crop 
program so when we have cover crops out there densely planted weeds can't get in there and thrive and we're not getting a lot of weed reproduction in our gardens we're keeping our weed seed bank low and that makes gardening much more enjoyable and a lot easier in the long run and then the sixth benefit which is not going to apply to everyone but certainly applies to us since we've got the chicken tractor is cover crops provide a great forage for animals so you've got goats or pigs or maybe even cows especially chickens you can use that to feed your animals so when we've got a nice lush cover crop out there and we've got the chicken tractor being rotated across that cover crop we don't have to feed our chickens as much they really like eating that stuff we cut back on the food cut back on our food cost and we also get some really good nitrogen addition to the soil while the chickens are eating that cover crop so now let's talk about what we're going to be planting today so i got this mix from green cover seed online and this one is called the overwintering mix. I also got another mix that we're gonna plant in that big plot I showed you earlier. I think that one is called the cool season soil builder mix. It's got a few more things in it than this does here, but I really like the components of this mix here. And that's why we're gonna be using it in this little plot. So I've got a 10 pound bag here and the recommended seeding rate for this particular mix is 60 pounds per acre that's if you're using a seed drill or some kind of planter to put it in the ground it says on green cover seeds website if you're broadcasting it you need to increase that rate by 50 percent so i'm guessing 90 pounds per acre if you're broadcasting now i usually don't pay much attention to those seeding rates because i like to plant my stuff way thicker than what is recommended so most of the time i just get a 10 pound bag here and that's what i use for this 30 by 35 or approximately thousand square foot plot that allows me to plant it really thick and get a really dense stand that also helps it be more resilient to grazing with the chickens that's why we want to plant it real thick because then it will come back as we move the chicken tractor over the plot and as far as planting a mix versus planting just one particular cover crop variety i would prefer to plant a mix but i don't always plant a mix i have a lot of times in the past just planted a single cover crop variety in a plot especially if it was something new to me and i didn't know how it was going to do i would plant it by itself see how it was going to do and then later on get a mix with that particular variety in it and that's what we've done here today i've grown many of these things in this mix but i've never grown this particular mix so let's talk about what's in this overwintering mix so the first thing we've got in here is hairy vetch which is a really cold hardy cool season cover crop it's also a nitrogen fixer and once it gets up and going it kind of climbs or vines all over the cover crop gives you some really good ground cover then the next thing we've got is balanza clover which i really really like in my opinion it blows the doors off your crimson clover any kind of those old school clover varieties we planted it in that big plot last year and let the chickens graze it the regrowth on that stuff was absolutely amazing it is a little slower to get going than some of your other clover varieties but once it establishes that kind of deep patch there man the stuff is resilient just keeps growing and growing it looks really really good and from what our corn did this year seems to put a lot of nitrogen in the soil and then the other nitrogen fixer in this mix would be the winter peas another cold hardy good cool season cover crop as well so that's going to add nitrogen in addition to what we're getting from the clover and the hairy vetch now the next two things on the list as far as what's in this mix are cereal rye and winter barley now i've never grown winter barley before so we'll just have to see how that does but last year we planted another cool season mix in this plot behind me here that had cereal rye in it and it seemed to do really well so both the rye and the barley are known to be a really good carbon source for the soil and they also have an extremely extensive root network and that's what we're going for here if we can get all those little root channels developed in the soil there graze it down with the chickens cover it with some compost we have all that biology left there when we go to plant our vegetables here next spring 
And then the last component of this mix is rapeseed, which goes back to the nitrogen scavenging benefit I told you about earlier. So it forms a really long, deep tap root. It's going to scavenge nutrients from way down there in the soil profile. It's also going to help to aerate your soils a little bit. Now, I don't have a huge issue with my soils being hard and compacted, but if you have harder clay soils, these cover crops with the deep tap root will help kind of aerate your soils and make them a little easier to work in the future. Now before we inoculate this and plant it, one more thing about cool season cover crop mixes, especially down here in the south where we can hit 80 degrees randomly during the middle of winter, is that some of this stuff will go to seed before the other stuff. And you really don't want this stuff going to seed because you don't want it to create a weed problem in your plot. What I found last year doing some mixes of my own is that if I have one component of the mix going to seed, I can come in there and mow it on my mower's high setting. Also use the chickens to mow it as well. And whatever went to seed will eventually kind of die out and get taken over by some of the other components of the mix. So like last year on the other side of the barn, we had some mustard that went to seed early, but had a lot of other stuff in the ground, some kale, some clover, some winter peas, stuff like that. When the mustard went to seed, we mowed it and then the clover kind of took over after that. So with these mixes, you'll kind of see a succession of growth throughout the winter. You might see some of this stuff take off really early and you might not even notice the clover is there at first, but as the season progresses, you'll kind of see the clover take over a little more and kind of, you know, smother some of this stuff out. You're still gonna get all the benefits of having everything in there, but it's kind of neat to watch the succession of growth with these mixes here. So we've got our bag of seed here. We've got the inoculant, which was included. Didn't have to purchase that separately, which I really, really like. Got our bucket. Got a little water here for the inoculation process. So let's pour the seeds in our bucket first here. Like I said, I'm gonna use all of this. So if we take a look at this mix here, we can see those grain seeds in there. We can see those winter pea seeds in there. We can see those clover and rape seeds in there as well. Nice looking mix. So the inoculant here, if you're not familiar with these, what this does is it provides the bacteria that these nitrogen fixing cover crops need to fix their nitrogen. So not everything in this mix needs an inoculant. We're gonna inoculate the whole thing because the seeds are already mixed together. So the only things that really need the inoculant would be the hairy vetch, the winter peas, and the clover. Now it says this bag here is enough for 50 pounds, two ounces per 50 pounds. So we don't need to use all this bag. But there's really no such thing as too much inoculant. We'll use, I don't know, about half of it or so. We we'll just dump it in there. It's probably pretty good. And then we'll put a little bit of water in here at a time. And we'll just start mixing it together. Getting all those seeds coated with that inoculant there. And it looks like they're all coated. Now we're ready to throw some seeds. Will the odds, giving all bars, breaking bones, telling lies, letting go. All right, all right, all right. We got that 10 pounds of seed broadcasted out there as evenly as we could do by hand. Then we combed over it a little bit with the landscape rake. And that last step I do with the lawnmower is something I like to do when I'm planting cover crops in an area that hasn't been tilled. So we haven't tilled this plot here. All we did was wheel hoe it, get the weeds out of there, then put the composted wood chips on top. Running over it with the lawnmower tires there helps kind of pack the seed into the soil, gives us more seed to soil contact and better germination. 
And although it looks like it could start raining any minute now, the forecast says it's not supposed to get here till later this afternoon or tonight. So I may go ahead and put the tripod sprinkler on here, go ahead and soak this down a little bit for an hour or so, and then hopefully we can get some rain on it tonight. So that's one cover crop down, still several more to go in the next few weeks. We've got the big plot I showed you earlier. That's gonna get that cool seeds and soil builder mix. Our plot over there with the polar bear pumpkins and our fall taters. As soon as those are done, we're gonna plant this same overwintering mix over there. And then where our Ruiz Okri is, once we get a frost, once that's done, I'll probably wait for a little warm spell and plant some mustard over there. I always like to follow my Okri with a mustard cover crop because it really helps with nematodes. And now as promised, I wanna show you something really cool. We made with these right here so if you've been following along you know we grew two varieties of peanuts this year first time we've ever successfully grown peanuts we grew a double row of valencia peanuts made a big pot of boiled peanuts with those and then we grew another double row of these virginia jumbo peanuts which you can boil but we grew these mostly to try and make our own homemade peanut butter so after we pulled these Virginia Jumbo peanuts, I put them on our drying rack underneath the pole barn for three or four days. We picked the peanuts off the plants, we rinsed the peanuts off, and then we roasted some of them. These here haven't been roasted yet, but we roasted a pretty good batch of them and then shelled the peanuts. So once we had the shelled roasted peanuts, after a little bit of time in the Ninja processor, we ended up with this right here, the best peanut butter I've ever had. This stuff right here is mighty, mighty fine. Now this is pretty easy to make and I'll tell you how we did it. So I looked online at several different homemade peanut butter recipes and several of them said you don't really have to add anything to it but salt. You just put it in the food processor and let it run for a while and it eventually turn it in to peanut butter. What I found in our Ninja food processor was that I had to add a little bit of olive oil to it just to kind of get it to blend up nicely you just kind of have to hammer down on it and let it go and it eventually turn into peanut butter so i add a little olive oil to ours a little salt and also a little honey and i really like the addition of the honey so when you take a bite of this at first it's kind of sweet you can taste that honey in there and then after a few seconds, you can taste the saltiness with the salt added and the peanuts. So you get a whole range of flavors there. And this is really, really good stuff. And we didn't come close to using all our peanuts just to make this little batch right here, which is kind of like a small jar of peanut butter. So we wouldn't up getting a good bit of peanut butter off that row of peanuts there. And given how good this stuff tastes, I think it's definitely worth doing. Now, if for some reason you're not able to grow your own peanuts, you could obviously go to the store, get a bag of roasted peanuts, shell them, and make your own peanut butter that would look just like this. But there's just something nice about knowing that we grew the peanuts that are in this peanut butter. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. It was nice to get some more cool season stuff planted, and hopefully it'll be nice to get some rain later on today. If you have any additional questions about cover crops or cool season cover crops, specifically put those in the comments below and i'll try to answer them for you also if you've ever made any homemade peanut butter let me know how you did it and maybe what you added that really worked well so we can try that on some of our other peanuts that we haven't blended yet if you're watching on youtube be sure to check out our affiliate links below a lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at lazy dog farm even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts don't forget to go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where we've got our garden blog recipes hats shirts all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy the video be sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.